Segment three, Gold and Black Live, joined by two stalwarts. Is that a good word for 2022 of Purdue football coverage? Certainly Tim Newton, the voice of Purdue football, and Tom Deanhart, our, our colleague at goldenblack.com. And gentlemen, this is as uh, I'm going to use my Curb Your Enthusiasm line. It's the last day you can say Happy New Year. According to Larry David, today is it. Happy New Year, guys. Welcome to the show. I know this is a highlight for you, Tim. You don't get enough of this media stuff. But Tim, uh, you know, really, when you wrap up the 2022 C 2021 season, I should say, man, I'm still still buzzing over that unbelievable college football game played on December 30th in Nashville. And, and one thing's for certain, Tennessee folks are never going to let this one go, apparently. But uh, what a great win for Purdue. And and your call on the on the Payne Durham touchdown, one of the best I've heard. But really an amazing, now that you have a week or in a day to look back at it, to put it into some perspective. Well, I think you said it right. The Tennessee fans, probably a little salty still from the Carson Edwards foul <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in, the, uh, in the NCAA tournament game. Um, an unbelievable game. In a season where, as we know, with a lot of opt-outs and a lot of questions, are, do, are bowl games meaningful? Do fans get into the games? Do players get into the game? I think that game in Nashville, at least for that day, uh, should put those to rest for a while. Uh, it was a tremendous game and a, a fitting end to a tremendous season. I don't think there were a lot of Boilermaker fans before the season started that would have put nine in the yeah. win column, but uh, here we are. Yeah, Tom, you, you had, uh, we have talked at length about six, seven in that win column, maybe eight if, if everything rolled well. Now you, you've been kind of wrapping up the season on the site this week, but how do you put that? How do you lay that to rest uh, in an amazing finish for the Boilermakers in 21? Yeah, Tim summed it up pretty well there. And um, you too, Alan. Uh, exceeded expectations, I guess, is a succinct way to put it. Um, and it, again, the way they capped the year, right? Uh, you talk about improbable. You have a Purdue team that doesn't have its top two wide receivers, number one left tackle on offense, best defensive end, best defensive tackle, best cornerback. <laughs> and they still won the game. Yeah. And uh, yeah, heart, 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 heart pounding, uh, heart pounding theater as well. So tremendous momentum now for Purdue heading into Jeff Brom's sixth season at West Lafayette. The script seems like it's been flipped after two, uh, you know, tough seasons, 2019, 2020. And now again, you, 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 this is what we do. I always say, Tim, we're allowed to look ahead because we're in the media, right? Yeah, and absolutely. This one game at a time stuff for us. <laughs> you look at the schedule. I love looking at schedules. Most agree that this looks like a favorable schedule next year for Purdue. And you factor in Aiden O'Connor's return. And you have a cocktail of a lot of enthusiasm for next year. So it's going to be exciting. I know there's work to do. There's going to be holes to fill. But again, uh, there's a lot of anticipation already for this coming season. You know, Tim, I, I had the opportunity to interview Brock Spack this week, the former Purdue linebacker and defensive coordinator. And just talking about the tsunami of tsunami of college football and all the things that have gone on here in the last week, not weeks, in the last months, meaning COVID, NIL, transfer portal. And yet one thing I think that we got, we may have learned maybe uh, uh, based on Purdue's performance in Nashville is that uh, this team was resilient and they put a, put a product on the field. You know, there's going to be a lot, by definition, there's going to be a lot of changes and things that are going to change. We already know about assistant coaches that are moving on. Uh, what did you learn about Jeff Brom and company in terms of at least how this team or the leadership or the whatever adjusted, got the job done in Nashville? And they're going to have to have that same mindset, one would think, in 2022 because change is the new constant in college football. And I think that's probably the thing that set the 2021 team apart was its ability to be resilient and, and go back no further than the bowl game. Yeah. You know, we all looked at each other in the booth when it got to 21 seven and you yeah. had that feeling I and mean, you didn't want to, but you had that feeling of here we go again, yeah. because it didn't look at that point, like Purdue is going to be able to stop Tennessee at all. But you go back to the Nebraska game earlier this year, Nebraska has got a lead. They're driving again. And you think, well, this could be a long day. And then Jalen Graham makes a play. Yeah that turns the game around. And 
Mm. You know, the Indiana game, Indiana goes right down the field on its opening drive. And you think, well, this is going to be one of those bucket shootouts and they don't score again. So I think what set this team apart was its ability to bounce back and the whole next man up mentality. Uh, Brock, I don't know what kind of season Brock Thompson will have next year, but his <laughs> place in Purdue history is already set. Perfect. No one will forget. No one will forget what he did in that bowl game on two bad knees. And mm. that kind of epitomized uh, what this team was about. It, it was a true next man up, next man mentality. Doesn't matter who's not playing. Let's worry about who is playing. And they found a way to get it done nine times this this fall. Yeah, Tom, one of our, our last guests was a, a an example of that, of course, Jackson Antrip and, and his ability to be that next man up, be a guy that was completely, you know, should never really been recruited by Purdue and to some extent, though he is an Antrip and, and that uh, that means a lot. An amazing thing is that, uh, again, uh, you know, you got you have guys that are going to come back next year, Mershawn Rice, uh, Taylor, or uh, uh, Sheffield, TJ yeah. Sheffield on down the line. Got, and of course, Sheffield played in the bowl game. That has to bode, give you some hope, uh, a lot of hope that this is a program that's got enough talent uh, to be competitive when Penn State comes calling on Labor Day weekend. Yeah, you're right. There's uh, there's talent coming back, but there certainly are questions, Alan. Yeah. Talked about the wide receiving core. And yeah, boy, that, that, that's that's a great place to start. Always a point of strength under Jeff Brom typically every year, right? Well, there certainly are a lot of questions as we march into 2022. Of course, David Bell's gone. The status of Milton Wright's murky as he works on his grades. And Jackson Anthrop's departing. Brock Thompson's going to have off-season surgery on both knees. Mershon Rice, Abdur Yaman Racine are both coming off injuries as well. And uh, my focus is on these two transfers coming in. Tyrone Tracy from Iowa, who's uh, was an Indianapolis kid. I think he's got a great chance to start. And Elijah Canyon from, from, from Auburn is going to be one of their bigger wide receivers. Not quite as proven as Tracy, but I think he's going to get every chance to impress this spring as well. And, uh, yeah, you talked about T.J. Sheffield, Allen. Of course, he hurt his ankle in that ball game. Yeah. I had a boot, has a boot on. He's going to get an MRI. He may have to have surgery. Well, they'll find out more here soon, I'm sure. So there's talent, of course, but again, there's questions at wide receiver. Like I said, it's always been the hallmark spot under Jeff Brom. So the good news, guys, the quarterback throwing the football to whoever's <laughs> it. Hey, man, you guys, you've been around longer than me, not that much longer, but I tell you what, Aiden O'Connell, he's awfully special, isn't he? Yeah. And you know what, Tim? How can you say a guy at five, that threw for 534 yards and five touchdowns kind of had an off day? I mean, that, yep. and that's not that's not tr really true, <laughs> but he did miss some guys. Yeah. And yet, in in full disclosure and full fairness to Aiden O'Connell, which is one of the great sport stories not only in Purdue football history but really on the landscape of college football right now. You know, it was really, really impressive. He proved he could throw to guys that he did. I'm not sure he even knew who they were uh, in that game or guys that really stepped up. Uh, uh, an amazing story is my point. And Aiden O'Connell, put that in a little bit of context in terms of your years of watching guys next man up, so to speak. And Aiden O'Connell's been living that for the last three years. Well, for, let me just throw one more name. Tom mentioned a lot of the receivers, but one guy to keep an eye on next year is Deion Burks. Yeah, yeah. we saw him make a big nice catch. catch in the Music City Bowl. No question. Yeah, Aiden O'Connell. You know what impresses you about Aiden when you talk to him is just, he's, it's just so calm. <laughs> it's so calm. It doesn't make, you know, you look at him in that, at the end of that game, there's no ripple on the pond. And I think that's, that's a trait that is, it's hard to come by. We talked after the game, Alan, you were, you were sitting next to us. And I said, well, if Purdue is trying to put a commercial out into the portal for a standout wide receiver, I think they just put on a pretty good show here because as you, as, as we've talked about, Aiden put up some tremendous numbers without his best two receivers. Mm -hmm. um, if ever there was a call, a clarion call of, Hey, you want to catch a hundred balls or so next season, we got a pretty good guy in a pretty good system here. Why don't you come on up? So uh, I, I think, you know, one of our, one of our starting receivers may not be on, on the campus or on the roster or even on our radar right now. I just have a feeling that the portal is going to continue to be an active living thing all the way through the summer and uh, you just have a feeling that somewhere some some blue chip kid that 
either just not happy with what he's got right now or, or whatever is going to find his way here. Yeah, and Purdue's already a couple steps ahead of that. Yeah, I, I get the biggest kick out of Aiden Co O'Connell. His biggest reaction, negative reaction, is doing this. That's all he and he does that for five seconds, and then he moves on. He he's just he uh, you know he'd be I'd like him to be my heart surgeon someday if that if he if he wants to go into medicine because he he is steady and uh, absolutely terrific. All right, one of the Tom, one of the storylines, and I'll get both your comments on this. Obviously, the de Purdue's defense made market improvements so much so that allowed this team to really be competitive of 13 games you could make build a case that even in a 45 point uh, giving up 45 points against uh, Tennessee it did some good things at the right time to get the job done uh, yet you're going to have some change there we know at least of one uh, change a big one Brad Lambert going to Wake Forest uh, being closer to home. I know he still has family in Charlotte, but that's uh, been a guy that's been earmarked as a guy that's really made some substantive changes in that defense. Tell me about uh, what, what, you know, what challenges is that, or is that just the new normal? You're going to have to, you're going to have to find the next person to get this done, but that attacking defense made a huge difference in really the persona of this football team. Yeah, I think it was the true story of the 2021 team. Honestly, guys, um, so many questions as the season dawned about that defense, entirely new staff. You had about what four or five new guys from the portal. How was it all going to work out? And it worked out splendidly for the most part, right? From game one all the way to, to, to the finale for the most part. So um, yeah, here we are again, new questions, new year. We talked about Brad Lambert's departure. It's disappointing. It's understandable. Purdue will now have its fourth defensive play caller in four years. Um, so if anything, these guys know how to adapt, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we all have to adapt in life, no matter what we do for a living. There's always going to be change. And, and then, then there's certainly been plenty of it on this coaching staff. But there's no reason to think that there's, there's, there's cause for alarm here. Uh, I think Jeff Rom has figured out what he wants to do defensively. No matter who that play caller is this fall, um, the style, the scheme are not going to change. Jeff Brom has made that abundantly clear. They're going to maintain that aggressive bent, working out of a 4-3 base scheme. Uh, not sure what direction they're going to go. I do know that they're going to take their time. Uh, and, you know, guys, he's, he hasn't been afraid to hire people he's never worked with before, so that's always something to be mindful of. And I think there's people on the staff, like Ron English in particular, who, would, who could more – more than capably step up and be the play caller if that's the direction he wants to go. So a lot of intrigue there. They may lose their cornerbacks coach, James Adams, as well. We'll know more about that, I think, in the next 10 days or so. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're ready to go, and there's no panic in the Kozich football complex at all. They'll get it figured out, and it's going to be interesting to see how it all dovetails together here, guys. You know, Tim, I, I think one of the stories, and I'll let you comment about the defensive coaches team, state changes, but I think that you, know, you have to give Jeff Brom a lot of credit for at least looking in the mirror after 2019 and, and 2020 that didn't go as, as he like. He's talked about the fact that he has, uh, he needed to, to take, as Gene Katie would say, check his whole card and, and move on and find new people. And that, uh, you know, he obviously accomplished that by getting, as Tom said, getting guys in that defensive coaching room that he had not worked with before. And a lot of coaches don't like to do that. So uh, this, that, that has to bode well, but it is going to be a challenge. You got to be able to stop people to win games. Purdue showed that for the most part this year, and that's going to be a challenge for uh, 2022. Well, I agree. First of all, I agree with Tom that as good as Aiden O'Connell and David Bell and the offense was at times this season, the story of 2021 was the defense. There's no question that the defensive turnaround kept Purdue in every game. Uh, the, the challenge there is that success sometimes um, brings the wolves to the door. Yeah. And, you know, there are not a lot of people lining up to get the coaches of a two and 10 football team, but they do come around to a nine and four football team. And so this is, I think this is actually something that you hope happens because it means you're having success. And, and the, the good part of it is, if you continue to have success, even though you'll lose good people, you'll be able to bring in good people. And so I, I'm, I'm on in Tom's boat on this, that uh, whoever it is, they're not going to change the style. The, the style of the defense was an attacking defense. It was pressed up closer to the line of scrimmage, more blitzing, 
all those kinds of things, you're going to see that continue regardless of who's calling the plays defensively. So yeah, the defensive turnaround in 2021, that's the thing that you'll take away from this season. And the reason that they had the, the huge turnaround that they had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excellent point. And we're going to have another conversation before maybe, but right as around the start of spring football is uh, that will be here before we know it. I think it will, I think if, if Purdue follows its usual plan, it will be that probably the last week of February uh, when uh, the Boilermakers get back on the practice field. But gentlemen, thanks so much. Uh, always insightful, always interesting uh, about uh, we put a wrap, a bow on a very, very successful 2021 season for the Purdue football team. want to thank our sponsors, Triple X, on the hill but on the level, the Purdue tradition since 1929. Hilton Garden Inn, when tomorrow's a big day, state HDI tonight. State Farm agent Trent Johnson at trentismyagent.com. And of course, the good folks at WLFI, Gordon Jackson and company for helping put this together. Uh, Tim, Tom, thanks again so much. And uh, we'll look forward to talking more down the road. Happy New Year. Happy Happy New Year for the last day. All right, Tom and Tim, have a great one. And thanks again. All right. Take care, fellas.